In this video, we will be drawing comparisons between teaching in person and online teaching to prepare you for those differences and how to deal with them. Studies have shown that the depth of interpersonal interaction in online courses predicted student success over any other variable, including technology and course design. So let's have a first look at the most important component of the teaching presence. Understanding how your role as an instructor varies in both environments is vital in becoming a successful online instructor. This will also, of course, depend on what type of online instructor role you will be taking on. Will you be more of a tutor, more of a facilitator, or a lecturer, or even something else? If you know what role you will be taking on, try to keep its specific nature in mind and focus on what's most useful for you and your students. If you're going to be a live tutorial instructor at Chiron with us, you can expect to be somewhere between a tutor and a facilitator, both supporting students with their content of their MOOCs, but also facilitating discussion and keeping things really interactive and participatory. The nature of their interaction with your students varies significantly in an online setting. It may seem more limited at the first look, but you just have to take into account different dynamics. For example, the way we concentrate in an online setting is different than an offline one. Although there is very little long-term research on attention spans, we can easily observe how our attention span is more limited online. In an online setting, we tend to have what we call the cinema effect. Since we are much more used to consuming video content on the internet rather than interacting, your students may have the temptation to just lay back and listen to you without actively engaging into the conversation. The result is a very disengaged and easily distracted classroom. Also, receiving feedback may be a bit more complicated. In a regular class, you receive clues from the facial expression of the students, but in an online setting, this becomes more difficult, even if a video chat is involved. You need to become more attentive and train yourself to be receptive to the feedback of the students. Speaking of which, why don't you leave us a comment to let us know how you're feeling about this unit so far, if you're learning something, if you feel engaged, if we should change something, that would be great. Talking about the difference between online learning and offline learning, time management makes a big difference as well. Online courses will provide you with much more flexibility for yourself and for your students, but we also increase the time management responsibility for both the learner and the instructor. Be aware of that um, when, because you need to balance out this freedom with some structure to help your students manage their time. Prepare syllabus and assignments due date carefully and well in advance so the students know what to expect and when. Another difference to take in account is the absence of a proper web etiquette. In a traditional setting, the rules on how to interact with each other are in most of the case instinctively clear, but this is not the case for online settings. You can address this problem by working on a do's and don'ts document together with your students at the beginning of the course. This is also a great way to get to know each other and create a good sense of community. Engage together on how to create a common space that feels comfortable for everyone. We already talked a lot about how the online setting actually reduces the possibilities for personal interaction. But this is just half of the story. Actually, the online setting can also be surprisingly intimate. And one of the biggest advantages of online learning is the chance for your students to personalize their learning path, picking the educational offers that they need most, and skipping or moving faster with the content they already feel comfortable with. Even if this will probably happen autonomously, you can guide your students into this process if the size of your online classroom allows you to do so. But most importantly, don't forget that you will have the chance to address students' feelings and needs personally, reaching out to them via email or other private communication channels. This is very important for the emotional connection that we talked about before. 